What is up guys, Fahir here from awesometoots.com and now that we have everything set up, we need the score for our player. For that, we're gonna right click on the canvas and we're gonna create a UI panel. So we're gonna create a panel that we are gonna name score panel or score background, which is gonna have source image score background. So here it is, this is the score background image. Let me just select here in the image property, the color, and I'm gonna set the alpha to full. So 255 because I want it to be visible and not transparent. Let me change here. So if I go here and set it in the middle, so this is for the anchor, set it at the middle and I'm gonna change the width to 225, change the height to let's say 144. This is gonna be our score panel right here that you see. I'm also gonna right click and create a UI text below it. And for the text, this is where we are actually gonna display our score text and we're gonna call it score text. And I'm gonna set the width of the score text to 200, well, 225, height is gonna be 144 and I'm gonna set the alignment at the middle center. I'm gonna change the color of the text to white. You see all of these properties are uh, in the inspector panel when you select the text itself. Set the font size to 48. Actually it can be 50. So 50 for the font size and the beginning score will be one. Let me just take a look at it somewhere around here. I will need to put it a little bit down. So if I select the score, let me just zoom in here. I need to put it something like this, yeah so that it will be in the middle. So where is my score? Here it is. I cannot see it because of the camera. So I will move it upwards. Here it is. So something like this for our score. So this is what we want. Let me just move the score a little bit further down. Let's say negative 30 on the Y and bam, we are done. Now what we want to do is animate the score background coming in. So for that, we are gonna set the score background at 650 initial height, you see here, initial height, or where it is. And inside of our animations, I'm gonna create a new folder for the score background animation, capitalized A animation, like this. So I will need to go into the animator, select the score background, hit create, and save it in score background animation. So here, score BG anim, hit enter, go on frame 60 right here, hit the recording button and I'm gonna put it down at 310 for the Y axis. So this is his animation, this right here. So when we start our game, we will see it animating and we will see it animating again and again and again because it loops. So we need to go into the animator himself. Here he is double click it, uncheck the loop time, and let me check it again, and I'm gonna say the speed, the initial speed is gonna be 0.5. So notice here, when we run our game, the score is slowly gonna start to come down as we just saw. The problem is that the score is not moving at all. We have died, by the way. So the score is not moving at all or actually changing. So how can we change the score? Well, for that, always there is a script to the rescue. So new folder, game manager scripts here inside of our game manager folder. I am gonna create a new C sharp script, which I'm gonna call gameplay controller. Who is gonna control our gameplay? I will create an empty game object here. Let me put it zero, zero, zero for X, Y, and Z. This does not matter at all. I just like it like that. So game play controller and attach it on the gameplay controller game object. So now we can start to code our final, well, lines of code. And here, tag the class as always, hold enter to give a little bit of space. So what do we need? Well, we need a public static gameplay controller instance, which we are going to call here to create that instance. So here we're going to say void make instance. And here we're going to test if our instance is equal to null. That means that we need to set the instance to be equal to this. So here I'm going to say instance is equal to this. 
And this is going to be called in the awake function. So make instance. I've talked about this numerous of times. What is this doing? How can we control sing or create singletons? So on and so forth. So you can watch other videos for that. I'm not going to re-explain myself. Here we need a public text, but in order to use it, he is located under Unity Engine.ui, as you can see here. So we need to type above here using Unity Engine.ui, which now allows us to type private text, and I'm gonna call it score text. So score text like this. We also need a private integer for score. This is well the integer that's gonna count our score and voila that is that so what do we need to do now is that we need to well calculate the score and we are going to do that in a function that is called count score which is going to be i enumerator so i enumerator which is a coroutine count score so count score like this we are going to do the following yield return new wait for seconds and we're going to wait 0.1 seconds so one tenth or yeah one tenth of a second and then we're going to call score plus plus to increment the score incrementing the score and now we're going to call score text dot text is going to be equal to score to string because we need to convert this integer score to string because well our text only accepts strings and we need to call here start coroutine count score so that we start counting our score and don't forget the parentheses here now we need to when we start our game so here in our void start function we need to get a reference to the score text itself so we need to say here score text is going to be equal to game object find the game object with the name score text now this right here the score text need to make needs to match up with this name right here so here it is make sure that these names are the same so find the game object with the name score text and get the component text from it and voila simple as that and afterwards simply start the kill routine to count our score so this is the coroutine that will start counting our score and well when we run our game the coroutine will start to count the score which we can test right now if we go here in unity hit the play button just wait for unity to load notice now it is counting the score but why what 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 let me just go here set it let's try it now so if I hit the play button now, yeah, now everything is okay. Just set the score text, well, position Y at zero. So zero for the X, zero for the Y. And you see now it is counting the score. But when we die, you see here, when we die, what we want to do? We want to call here, as you already saw, we want to call here our gameplay controller instance that the game is over. But before the game is over, we need to create the game over panel, which is going to, well, be the game over panel. So here I am going to go back in Unity Editor. I'm going to create a new panel. So UI panel. Here he is. Set the background as the score background again. Set the alpha at 255. Set the anchor in the middle. So the width of this one is going to be 385. The height is going to be 297. And this is going to be our end panel. So end panel. And for our end panel, we also need to add a UI text. Now this text is gonna display the final score. So I'm gonna name it final score. And the width of our final score is gonna be 270. The height is gonna be 99. I'm gonna set his Y position at 50. I am gonna change his font size to 40, not 50, but 40. I am going to say here one, which is not important. And I'm also going to set the alignment at the middle. So going from the left side, so left middle, and I'm also going to change the color. So here I'm going to change the color and voila, we are good to go. Let me just take it, take this dude. So here middle, I think everything is okay. Yeah, everything should be okay. Yeah, this is it. 
So here I'm gonna say height, which is our final score. Let's say 1000. And below these two, we are gonna attach our buttons. So I'm gonna go here, create a UI button. So one button we have here, which I'm gonna remove the text from. This is gonna be our again button, which will prompt us to play the game again. So play the game again, 145 for the width and the height, I'm gonna say 64. And I am gonna position this one at negative 75 for the X and the Y is gonna be negative 32. And here, let me just go inside of my sprites, backgrounds and buttons. Here it is our again button. Let me just select it and drag and drop it right here. And bam, this is our again button. I'm gonna duplicate this one. So this again is duplicated. I'm gonna call the new one menu. And let me just find our menu. It's somewhere around here. So here it is. Now the menu, I will need to go into our sprite editor and slice it sl slightly. Do I need to slice it here? Actually revert, let me just go here and set it to be multiple. Apply sprite editor and I'm gonna slice it like this. Just so, because the image is distorted a little bit, you see the image is not that good, but if the image is good, you don't need to do this. Anyways, for our menu here, I am gonna attach the menu. What am I doing here? So yeah, here it is, menu. Let me attach it right here and bam, here we have our menu. Now the menu, is again gonna be at negative or actually positive 75. Am I gonna leave it like this actually? Yes, I, I will leave it like this. I don't care. I just don't care. Anyways, I'm just kidding, but this is what we want. Now, I am also gonna create an animation for our panel. So our end panel is gonna be at 700 for the height initially. So 700 for the height initially go here into the animation create a new animation in animations i'm gonna create a new folder and panel animation hit create and here i'm gonna say end panel animation and voila here we are now where am i gonna put this end panel so let's go on frame 60 first frame 60 hit the recording button y position 77 and this is it so this is for our panel, you see, bam, and it is going here. Now, if we are smart, which we are, we're gonna learn from our mistakes. So we forgot to uncheck the loop for the score background. We are not gonna forget that for the end panel. So uncheck the loop time. I'm also gonna right click and create an empty state here. And I'm gonna call this one idle. And I'm gonna set, so right click on the idle and click this set as default layer state because we don't want to play the end panel animation until we need to do so. And this end panel, I'm gonna call it here end panel. So this is how I'm gonna call the animation. Make sure that you don't forget this because we will need to call the animator of the end panel. So end panel, here it is to play that animation. We don't wanna play it right away because well, it makes no sense to play the animation right away. So right click, create an empty state, which is this one, name it idle. Right click on the state and click set as layer default state. If I go back in my script here, I need a couple of more game objects. So I need a public game object, which I'm gonna call score panel and I need a public text, which is gonna be our end score and a public animator and panel anim. I need all of this and we need to drag and drop them. So go back in our Unity, select the gameplay controller. For the score panel, select the score background. For the final or end score, select the final score right here and for the end panel and I'm select the end panel right here. So what we need to do now? Well, we simply need to create a public function. So public void game over. What do we want to do here? Well, simply we're gonna call our score panel, set active to false to deactivate our score panel, which is, well, this, the one that is counting the score, this one when we run the game. So this panel right here, we wanna deactivate it. We don't want it to be there when the player dies. And then we are gonna call our end score and we're gonna say dot text is gonna be equal to height like this plus our score to display the final score. 
And finally, end panel anim dot play, not playback time, but play the animation with the name and panel. And we are calling this right here, as you can see. So we are calling this right here and simply uncomment this line of code now out. Let's test it out and see if it actually works. So when I hit the play button, let us just wait for us to die. So here we have our panel, here we have our B, we have the ninja enemy. Let's hope that somebody will kill us from the, okay. Bam, we have died. Let's wait for the end score panel. It's not appearing because we are, or I am, you are not, you are smart, I'm stupid, because I forgot to select the end panel. Set the update mode to unscaled time because we are setting time dot scale or time scale you see here to zero. So we need unscaled time for the animator. Let's try this again. So let's wait for us to die here. We have the flag. We have the B. Come on. Let some let us somebody kill us. Where is the tree? Here it is. And bam, we have died. You see height is here. Now we have one problem here. We have, the animation is playing too fast, so I'm gonna say here 0.5. So 0.5 for the animation. We see that the animation is there. I set 0.5, which will make the animation go slower. Now, before we proceed to test that out again, we have two buttons and I'm gonna create functions that we are gonna add to those buttons. So we are gonna have public void again to restart the game, but before we restart the game, it's a good time to set, it's a good time, it's a good idea to, to set the time scale back to one. And we're gonna call the scene manager. So right here on the top, type using Unity Engine Scene Management, which is gonna allow us to use our scenes and move from one scene to another. This is how we actually load levels. So here, we're gonna call the scene manager dot load scene and I'm gonna call here again scene manager dot get active scene dot name, which is gonna reload the same scene. And here we're gonna have a public void menu, which is gonna bring us back to the main menu. And simply here we're gonna say the same thing time dot time scale is one and scene manager dot not scene, but scene manager dot load scene. We are gonna load the main menu scene. So before we proceed to test it out again, we will need to go here and select again and the menu button. So again and menu button, click the plus button right here on them, drag and drop the gameplay controller here. And for the again, I'm gonna select again. For the menu, I am gonna select the menu. Now, not game over, but menu. Come on here, where is the menu? I've talked about this numerous of times. This is how we can attach a game object to a button and make it execute a function from one of the scripts attached on that game object. In our case, we have again and we have the menu. So as you can see here on the again, we drag and drop our gameplay controller here. Then from the drop down list, we select the functions that are attached on that game object. So we have the gameplay controller and we have here a list of functions. We have our function called again, we select it, which means when we press the again button, bam, this again right here function will be executed. Now we will have one problem that we will solve in a moment, but let us wait for our player to die. Let's hope, so we have the B, we have the ninja enemy, come on, come on, where is some of these? Okay, bam, we have died. You see, here is our height. If we press again, bam, we reload the same, well, we reload the same scene. If we go back here, or actually, let me just wait for it to die. If I try to load the main menu, yeah. Main menu, I cannot load it, and we see we have a problem. What is the problem here? Well, the problem is that we did not add it to the build. What is the build? Well, let me go here, scenes, main menu, and go under file, build settings, and here we need to click add open scenes. This will add the current scene to the build where you are. So we have the main menu. Now go into the gameplay and also click add open scenes. And now we will be able to load one scene and go from one scene to another. So if you don't do this, we will not be able to go as you just saw, we clicked on the menu. It did not bring us there because we did not add that scene to the menu. And I've talked about this also in my previous 
tutorials and I talk about this in my courses. Now for the main menu here we also need to attach a script so that we can click this play button. So in the scripts I'm simply going to right click here C sharp script main menu script and we can create an empty game object. So here I can create an empty main menu controller like this attach the main manuscript on the main menu controller. Come on, man, attach it. Double click it. We don't need to give a little bit of space because here we're only going to have a public void. And here I'm going to say play game. And we do need to type using Unity Engine scene management because we are going to call here scene manager dot scene manager load scene game play like this. So we need to go back in Unity, select our play button. So play BTN, click the plus button here, attach the main menu controller, and then go here and select the play game, which will allow us to play our game from the start. So if we hit the play button, we have a nice main menu, everything is animating, we click on play, we go here and start playing our game. Let me just lower the volume a little bit, jumpy, 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 jumpy ninja. I will name this game probably jumpy ninja. So we have here, kill the squirrel, kill the ninja and his shuriken, kill the squirrel again, kill the squirrel again and died and bam, we have reached the height of 50 or 152. I just made a mistake here. So if I go in the gameplay controller height, I need to add here two or call on and we are good to go. So this was it in regards to this tutorial, guys. Thank you for watching. Fire here from awesomedudes.com. I will catch you in one of my next tutorials.